Right, so once again, I, I was kind of tired and didn't particularly want to go out this evening, especially because the eagle owls are definitely fledging and I was being watched constantly uh, by one of the adults while I was getting everything ready for these plantings. Um, but it just makes me remember that uh, I have never yet been hit by them while under multi-layered vegetation, so uh, adding a subcanopy everywhere is, is probably going to help with that in the future. So appropriate to that, our first planting tonight is um, a known as Comosa, which is pretty much my classic tree of subcanopy. This is actually sub subcanopy here because we do have a Musakili immediately above, which you can probably see a couple of branches of in the shot, which is itself coming up below a much larger Paranari, which sort of shares canopy space with the Brecus tiges and the Bamboo. The Anona is going to be sharing its space with a Marker plant, which was originally the, the tree here. So, so this is a Dracaena studenary, which I planted here, I think, last rains. It might have been the one before that, and it had been growing along quite nicely until about a month ago. So mole rats decided they were going to just chew straight through the roots of it. So over it toppled. Um, but it can go back in, hopefully reroot here as a marker plant, and if the mole rats decide to chew it again, then I'll just plant it somewhere else, and if they don't, then when it gets big enough, I will uh, take cuttings of this to plant elsewhere and gradually reduce the stock here. We're also going to be putting in a piece of Peperomia obtusifolia, which is another really nice Caribbean uh, succulent ground cover, because this is an area that's a little bit awkward to water sometimes, so it's quite good to have something extra succulent around the base of this tree. The tree is very hardy and shouldn't mind the shortage of water, but it's still nice to keep the base of it a little bit more humid with ground cover because it just means that flowers are less likely to drop off if we have to have a sudden hot spell. Second tonight we're going uh, into the sort of afternoon edge of my thicket uh, where we're going to be adding yet another custard apple, this time Anona cherimola, the cherimoya, uh, which will be going in an area which has quite a few dracaenas, uh, both studentary and fragrance, and also actually a few pieces of reflex that are quite nearby here. And apart from that, there is also a nice java plum not far from here, which would be a problem if this was going, I think, on the morning side of that, because I think at, in this position it would get too little light that way. Uh, but provided I keep that reasonably well pruned, this is on the afternoon side of it, so it should get enough light throughout the year. We're not going to be putting in a ground cover here because we do have quite a few pieces of the Calenco prolifera that have self sort of planted themselves here, not seeded. It's from little bulbils bill that form on the flowers themselves rather than seeds. Uh, but we are going to be putting in a marker plant because these can drop their leaves quite readily if they dry out. They do spring back from it very well, but they can drop the leaves. And you can see the top of this has actually lost some of its leaves already. So we're going to be putting in a marker plant in the form of Dracaena reflexa. Thirdly tonight, we're going to an area where I had a couple of years back planted some mandarin and custard apple seedling. We're not actually going directly on any of those, because although I'm fairly certain all the mandarin seedlings have been wiped out by the chickens by now, the custard apple seedlings do seem to pop up again when the rains come, at least they did last rainy season. Uh, so I'm hoping they will continue that, and hopefully by the end of this rains they'll be large enough to be conspicuous when it's not raining. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to be putting an olive in here, so this is Olea europea. Uh, subspecies Europea, so this is the, the typical olive. Uh, this is a little bit more of a gamble on whether it will flower here because I don't know which cultivar this is and some cultivars can need a lot of chilling so we're putting it in an area where it's pretty clear directly up above so it should get all the cooling we can get it in winter because basically having, having a sort of direct funnel above will mean that the warm air can rise up and immediately around it should cool down and that gives it the best possible chance of having the chilling hours it needs for bud break and flowering and fruit set. Um, but we'll see. It isn't getting a marker plant because it is right in quite a nice toxic hedge. It doesn't really need a toxic barrier as such, but we are going to be giving it a bit of succulent ground cover in the form of an aloe arborescence and another nice little toxic barrier to sort of complement the Euphorbia tithomaloides in the form of a Calenco Fetch and Koi. And that should be everything for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you haven't enjoyed it, thank you for watching anyway. Please tune in again tomorrow because I will be planting something else. Uh, two something else's, I think. Uh, but we'll see.